Hi, I'm Janet Heimlich with the Child Friendly Faith Project. What you're about to see is a short video that will tell you what our day was like here in Amarillo, where we organized a reunion for survivors of Cal Farley's Boys Ranch and their loved ones. This was an important time, an important opportunity to get people together, some who haven't seen each other in decades, and other people to make new connections, but mostly for abuse survivors can come together and to be with other people that really understand what they went through and what they're still dealing with today. I've never got mental, uh, any mental health uh, through anybody, and uh, I just, uh, I don't know if I'll ever get it, but uh, the screaming and uh, the whipping is something you never forget. My dorm parent was sadistic. Um, he picked on the little kids. It was the small kids that were really the target of the dorm parent to pick on and to um, tease until they would cry and then he would be able to rack them and put them on restriction. I was beat one time with over 150 licks with a belt by five men. That night I was taken to the Vega jail and put in the Vega jail. I spent two weeks by myself in the Vega jail reading a Bible and letting my bruises and cuts heal before the people at the ranch saw it. I was sexually assaulted twice while I was out there. The first person that sexually assaulted me, he made me and another person do things together. My brother was raped when he was 10 years old, but he, uh, he never told me until a few years, I don't know, about a year ago. That's been over probably 50 or 60 years he's had this buried in him. And um, it, it's awful sad when your brother tells you something like that and he's had to live with it for all these years. My father and two uncles spent 10 years at uh, Cal Farley's. And it was something we didn't talk about um, growing up. I just knew that they were tortured. My brother passed away a few years ago, but his whole life was nothing but torment. And once I learned from the survivors what really happened to him at Boys Ranch, it became crystal clear to me why he did the things that he did over the years. I could never figure out how my brother, who started out in Catholic school and was an altar boy and a model student, decided that he would shoot dope into his veins every day and be so silent and we never knew what was going on. When one minute he would be okay and the next minute he would be trying to kill himself. Cal Farley's ruined my family. My uncle Greg Votaw was a drug addict his whole life. He died behind a dumpster from a heroin overdose. My surviving uncle, bless his heart, he's changed, but he, he did what was done to him, to me and my brothers. So the abuse keeps going. We're all pain. Boys Ranch literally is killing me because when they did, when they did the abuse, or the dining hall room, restorations, they, <laughs> it was asbestos. Everything out there was asbestos and they didn't remove it properly. And now I have pulmonary fibrosis, asbestosis, and I was told I won't even see my daughter graduate high school. The other thing that we're interested in doing is to try to be a bridge between survivors and Boys Ranch to see if the institution could use some of its many, many funds to help some of these individuals who have some very desperate needs. I started a Facebook group called Cal Farley's Boys Ranch Survivors, and uh, we, it's been going on, I think, about two and a half years. The first two years, 
uh, it was kind of a secret group, and we I think we only had 14 people in it. And uh, after Jason Wilson's uh, article, uh, we uh, let more people in. Right now we got 80, I think it's 83 people. I'm here also to, to talk for those who can't talk and those who, who can't do this today because I'm standing up for them who can't do this because I believe in what we're doing here is let the public know that, that, I, that I love the boys who I'm here with and that we do care about our own.